St. Hubert's uh, job and networking ministry, which is the one that Bob facilitates. Um, if you're looking to get into a, a large group where they have leads, they have good speakers that come in, um, the accountability groups program that you have is outstanding. It's, it's really a tremendous group, and it's just a tremendous advocate to, to job seekers all over the place. And I don't want to run into your time too much. I want to hand it over to you. Okay. Well, good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm uh, really pleased to be here. As uh, Paul had indicated, I started the St. Hubert Job and Networking Ministry in 2003. I was out of work at the time, uh, and there were five of us from our church who um, uh, we banded together. Uh, I gave them a straw man uh, as to what our program would look like. Uh, they accepted it, and uh, we went on from there. Best thing that could happen to us is to be laid off. Uh, that's not going to happen, I'm afraid. Uh, we're affiliated with 31 different churches, so it's non-denominational, it's open to all, and it's free, just to uh, give you some insight. Uh, we're going to be talking about preparing for the one-on-one -on -one networking meeting. We all know that about 60% of jobs, perhaps even 70% of jobs, are found uh, through networking. And we have seen this over and over and over again at St. Hubert, where individuals have come back and said, this is how I found my job, this is how I got my uh, opportunity, uh, this is the person who led me to this or referred me to this opportunity. And I think we have the opportunity to do that for ourselves as well. Uh, first, networking is a learned skill. I want to make sure that you understand that you don't need to be gregarious and an extrovert to be good at networking. Some of the best networkers that I know are people who were introverts, uh, but they learned it. It is a learned skill, and the better uh, we get at it uh, comes through working it and actually doing it. And so, um, step one uh, is to identify everyone you know and you need to know. Now, I say that because, uh, again, we need to start uh, with making a list, and many people don't do that. They kind of wing it. Uh, they kind of go off and say, well, you know, let me call this person today, and they kind of, you know, reflect, oh, yeah, I forgot to call that person, or I should be calling that person. We should be making a list of everybody that we know. When making your list, uh, a good starting point is to look at these various categories, and the categories are family, uh, who do you know uh, within your family, and this goes to father, mother, uncle uncles, aunts, cousins, and so on. Uh, within your church or uh, within uh, your uh, uh, religious belief uh, system, and those people who are part of that. Your past employers the, and po potentially competitors, those people who were peers, superiors, subordinates, and clients, suppliers, and services that you purchased, those people should be on your list because they are in your industry and they know exactly where uh, the openings are because they're going to see them uh, in advance of oftentimes those opportunities being posted. Other professionals that you know, and that's doctors, lawyers, insurance representatives, these people are in the world of business and often uh, know where perhaps there's a growth opportunity or something is developing that they might pass along. Uh, school, uh, there are professors, and many of us uh, fail to go back to some of our previous professors who oftentimes do consulting work on the side, uh, and they worked with corporations and companies uh, within their area of specialty. And here we are with that same degree. We have the opportunity to put that to use by potentially going back to some of those people. Officials, deans, alumni, uh, sor sorority people, uh, fraternities, um, uh, folks that we know. Uh, and the like. And then volunteering, uh, volunteer groups that you are a part of. Uh, perhaps in the area of children, uh, we all have had to go to such things as soccer matches and, and things of that nature. Well, let me tell you something. I had known people who were standing on the sidelines uh, routing, rooting for their kids uh, and talking to another parent, and the parent said, hey, um, you know, you're looking for a job. Why don't we get together for a cup of coffee? We're looking for somebody at our company. It does happen. And so think in terms of expanding your list to even those things associated with children. Hobbies, uh, certainly hobbies, uh, historical uh, arenas, um, and I'm talking there about going back and reaching in to friends and acquaintances, uh, in-home service providers, those kinds of things, community and recreation. So if anything, I would suggest that every single person in this room should be able to come up with a list at least immediately of over 150 names uh, without question. Uh, 
So again, um, uh, everyone that you know. Step two is categorize them by the relevance. And that means that one of the things we want to do is we want to look at this from the standpoint of occupational category and industry focus. If they are in our same occupational category, the chances are they may get that call from the search firm or the employment agency that might say, hey, who do you know who? If they know you, they might be able to refer you. Uh, in the industry uh, arena, if they are looking for an individual who is in the same, uh, in the same industry, uh, they may be able to likewise uh, do the same thing, refer you when they get a call or when they hear something or perhaps they may know of a specialist that works within that industry. <coughs> Uh, influencers, these are individuals who might be association presidents, uh, vice presidents, secretaries, uh, chairman, speaker, chair, and it may also be people who are uh, speakers in your field uh, that might be out there in an association meeting providing a presentation. Third party representatives are those search firms and employment agencies that I was talking about who go out there and find talent for the companies in any other category. So you can categorize them one, two, three, A, B, C, however you wish to categorize them. But it gives you the opportunity to now say, I've got some targets, specific directed targets towards my job search, which applies to my occupation and industry. Step three, make contact, simple and pure. But you need to start doing it by category. So category A, those that are occupationally based. B, those that are, are uh, specifically uh, in, in the industry. Uh, and that could be target company representatives. Set up a face-to-face -face meeting. Hopefully you were referred by somebody or they know you in advance. Okay. If they know you already, there's no problem. If they don't know you, it would be a good idea to see if you could figure out a way of having somebody refer you to them because then they take your call and they also open themselves up to a meeting a lot easier. Indicate that you're making a career change, that you cherish their opinions because of their particular position uh, and or in the industry. Uh, they have a unique feel for the profession. A unique feel because of the fact that they're there, they're employed, uh, they're with a company, and perhaps they've been in that industry a long period of time. Uh, and then, uh, by reputation, which means that if you were referred, you can say that you were referred to me because of your reputation in the field. And your meeting will only take approximately 20 minutes of their time. I'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment. Okay, at the least, you want to get a resume into their hands and find out who they might suggest in regard to any additional individuals that they uh, would perhaps suggest you talk to. But you want to at least get one resume in their hands, and I suggest two. The reason being, one resume can go into a inbox, and then the receptionist comes in or the assistant comes in, plops the mail down in the inbox, and now your resume is buried. And so one of the things that I suggest is you give them two, one to keep and one to act on, which means that perhaps they might be able to send it along to HR or send it along to one of their contacts or send it along to one of the search firms that they do business with, okay? All right, before the appointment, be thoroughly familiar with everything on your resume. Uh, I can't tell you how many people I've talked to over the years, and I spent 38 years in senior human resources positions, mostly on the hiring side, uh, people who, unfortunately, uh, have a resume done by somebody else or they've forgotten what's in there. And now you ask them and they say, huh, what? Uh, and he, you don't want that to happen to you, okay? So have four key values that you bring to your occupation. And so this gentleman right here, Doug, uh, would you hold up your portfolio? Just hold it up. Thank you. If you go into a networking meeting, you should have your portfolio. And in that portfolio, on that first page, you should have four key values that you bring to your occupation that you want to make sure you get out in that conversation, whether it's a networking meeting or an interview. You also want to have some questions and other things on that first page uh, so that you're prepared and ready to go uh, when you're networking. Do some research on them and their company. You want to make sure 
that you know something about them. Now, one of the things that I do is I go out on the website uh, and I look up what's going on. I'll go to Glassdoor and see what employees are saying. I'll go to LinkedIn. Uh, and when I was in HR, one of the things that I was interested in is what is the reputation of this company as it pertains to their employees. So I would do something kind of interesting. I would put the name of the company into my search uh, uh, Yahoo or got Google, okay? Put the name of the company, comma, litigation. <laughs> okay, and and here's the thing, and, and our lawyer friends here will tell it, tell you tell you that there isn't one company that hasn't been sued uh, for something because contract law uh, uh, stipulates uh, uh, a lot of things, but wording uh, can be interpreted differently, and so those kinds of things will come up. Forget about it. That's that's standard operating business activity. But when it comes to EEO charges, when it comes to sexual harassment charges, when it comes to those kinds of litigation, I want it to run in the other direction. I don't want to join a company that has those kinds of reputations and problems. <coughs> so again, there's lots of good stuff out there. You can find out about their customers, their products, their services, processes, mission, values, as well as personal history on the person that you are going to meet with through LinkedIn. Just look at their profile, find out more about them. Hopefully they have a lot out there. Be sure to have one minute briefing your elevator pitch. I believe that 30 seconds is probably enough but most people uh, would like to say more about themselves and perhaps those four key values, that's fine. A firm direction on where you're going. This is the biggest issue. Well, I'm not sure exactly what I want to do uh, or what kind of position I would like to have. Oh my God, please leave. I don't want you here, okay? Because I don't know how to help you if you don't know how to help yourself, if you don't have a direction. So please, if you will, have an occupation and industry target when you visit with someone. Don't waste their time and yours. Have some examples of your work to show. Now in that portfolio that you bring, perhaps you can have a sample report that you generated, a budget that you worked on, a litigation case that was a premier uh, aspect of it, whatever, uh, a software package that you designed uh, or something that you, you developed, okay? so that you can hand it to them. Interestingly, those of us who are over um, age uh, will remember some organization which was called the Fuller Brush Company. And the Fuller Brush Company um, was a company that sold brushes door to door. And what the guy would do when he'd come to the door is he would knock on the door, the lady of the house usually uh, would open up the door and he would hand her a brush immediately. And she would, oh, and she'd take the brush and he would say, I'm your full of brush representative, I'm here to da, da, da. And this brush you have in your hand happens to be a bottle brush that you can use to sanitize baby bottles, blah, 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 because you heard the baby crying in the background. Okay, and, and so what he would do is he would provide that in her hands. Once she had that in her hands, he knew that he was probably going to walk away with at least one sale, the brush in her hand. So when you come up with examples and you show those examples to an employer and put it in their hands, the chances are they become a buyer, okay? Just as with the Fuller Brush people and when they did that, okay? So have extra copies of your resume handy because you never know when an additional interview is going to crop up uh, unexpectedly. Four things that uh, you want to say about your expertise, we talked about that. Pre-established questions to ask, have those on that first page of your resume, and then several things that they can do for you. So, look at who they are. How close is the relationship to you? If they're very close, you can ask for almost anything. If they're distant, meaning second or third or fourth level, then at that point, perhaps there's only one or two things you can ask for in terms of help. <coughs> okay, know your target. Uh, to get the help you need, know what you want to do so that they can help you. It's like giving them a handle that they can grab hold of and now they can help, help you steer. Type of work that you perform best. Know where you want to work. Specific. What kind of companies do you want to work for? What kind of an environment? Is it a large company, small company? Is it indoors, outdoors? What kind of an environment? What kind of products and what kind of customers would you work with? And what kind of processes and procedures and methodologies would you use? that you are familiar with and expertise with, where you add value. And then hold to the time 20 minutes. 
So what I used to do is keep my watch handy, and I would watch. And when it came to 20 minutes, I would usually say, you know, um, I asked you for 20 minutes of your precious time. And I, uh, it's now 20 minutes. And I said, I have a couple of more really solid questions I'd love to ask you, but I understand that you have a job to do and that you're a busy person. I don't want to take more of your time. And then shut up. Because immediately the person will say, oh, that's okay. What's your next question? Now you're on their clock. But be appreciative of their time. If you ask for 20 minutes, keep it to 20 minutes. At least offer to end it there, even though you have other extremely important things to talk about. Be sure to leave behind a memorable impression that you are prepared, that you are confident, and that you have expert status through those four or five things you talked about. More than one copy of your resume handy, a business card, if you have business cards, you should have business cards, particularly for social networking. And by the way, please put a title so that two, week, two weeks later, I can pick up that card and say, oh yeah, this was John Smith or Sally uh, uh, Smith, and she is a uh, senior accountant, uh, AP, AR, whatever, okay? Your occupation, get it on that business card. A defined direction that you're heading in and an offer to help them. And I can't tell you how important this is. It's a two-way street. Networking is not a one-way path. It is a two-way. And I always ended my networking meetings by saying, maybe not today, perhaps not tomorrow, but at some point you may need something. I hope that you will take the advantage of picking up the phone and calling me and I'll be more than happy to help you if I possibly can. You've been gracious with your time. You've been helpful with your suggestions and, and direction and referrals. Thank you so very much. But please remember, I'm available to you as well. Always remember that it's a two-way street. Leave with all of your questions answered, as many of you as you can. One of their business cards, because it's an exchange situation. Additional assistance or promise of help from them and follow-up timing if appropriate. And again, assistance, promise of help. That could be to act as a referral in your behalf, maybe a character referral or a business referral. It could be uh, to provide you with some help in direction uh, to other people that they know in the industry that you might not have already on your target list. It may be that they provide you with a list from a recent conference or convention that they attended that was specific to the industry and has names of all the attendees. There's all kinds of things that they can provide in terms of help. But you have to end that meeting in some way, form, or shape by saying five magic words. And I want you to write these down. I want you to write these five magic words down. A lot of people may think that when I say magic words, it's silly, but it's not. These are magic words. You can help me by, let's say it together, you can help me by. And in that sentence, how can they help you? You can help me by um, providing me uh, the opportunity to, to uh, connect with anyone you know who's in the same occupation as me. There's an example, okay? Finish the sentence as you see fit in terms of what you would ask for, but that's an opportunity to get the promise of help that you need is using those five magic words. In follow-up, do those thank you notes. Indicate your targets again so that they have an idea of where that connect, all those connections were. I'll tell you how crazy I was, uh, not only in interviewing, but also in networking. I would go out to my car, I would pull out of my glove, uh, glove compartment of my car uh, my thank you notes, and I would write them in my car. Uh, I would address the envelope with the person's name on it, and I would walk right back in and give it to the receptionist and or the security guard and ask them to hand deliver it if they could today. So that by the end of the day, they had my thank you note already on their desk. Handwritten. That's how crazy I was. But guess what? The meaningfulness of that versus an email, which is which can be going into spam or can be uh, easily uh, just skipped over, uh, or a letter that takes time to get through the postal service and so on and so forth. It was there in their hands. Then I'd follow up perhaps with an email. Be sincere as possible. Reiterate your desire to return the favor. Again, I want to make sure that you understand quid pro quo in networking. And periodically advise on progress so that they know where you're at in your job search so that if they think of something later on uh, 
by virtue of your contact, they can say, oh yeah, I should have gotten back to him or her on that, particularly regarding referrals. Be sure to advise on landing and let them know how happy you were with the opportunity to have had their input, uh, their uh, perhaps focus, and their help. Okay, networking is a skill. Skills can be learned. And as I said, I knew some people who were very reticent uh, and, and, and were not very open. Uh, and they now today are some of the best networkers because they practice, they practice, they practice. They get better with time and practice. Like any skill, it takes tools, and so your tools need to be sharp, and those tools are pretty uh, common. A uh, current and upgraded connection list, uh, you use sharp and directed elevator pitch in your resume, your history of helping others, being engaged in your occupation. Let's stop there. One of the things that's happening in the marketplace, and I think Paul can verify this, is that employers are looking beyond what you did in the past. Uh, they want to know what you're currently doing and how engaged you are in giving back to your occupation and your industry. Those people who have been involved in associations, societies, who have given back um, in some way, form, or shape are getting the interviews. They're the ones who are now engaged. They see that fully engaged aspect of who they are and what they're all about within their profession. They're giving back. They're staying current by going to the meetings and attending the meetings. This has become one of the things that's now the, the, a differentiator, if you will, between candidates. So think about what are you doing today to show that you're fully engaged? Are you taking a course? Are you taking uh, and, and developing your skill base? Are you giving back through a society and so on and so forth? A strong occupational portfolio, uh, meaning that you've been a contributor within your field, uh, ability to stay current within your field, uh, and therein lies another part of it. We are now responsible for our own training. Many companies are not going to give us that added training. So it's up to us to stay current on the, what's, what's the current software within our field, uh, to stay current on the latest trends, the competition, where the competition is taking it, where the market is going. We need to make sure that we are fully engaged in where things are going and to show that we're up to speed on it. And with that, um, if you have any questions, um, I'm more than happy to answer them for you. Have I kept it in line, Paul? <laughs> Maybe not today, perhaps not tomorrow, but at some point you may need something. And I'll be more than happy to help you if I possibly can. You've been gracious with your time. Thank you so very much.